Hi, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the board for allowing me to speak. As we've done for the last few years, I'm here to present the 2021 progress report on behalf of the CRD Arts Commission. Uh, and you should all have a copy of the beautiful report in front of you. Uh, I'll be sharing a few highlights from the report today, uh, but of course there's more in there, uh, and I encourage you all to, to read it uh, as, as you can, and if you have any questions, to follow up. Um, uh, you'll find uh, within the report and, uh, updates on the actions under, of our strategic plan, as well as a timeline of the last 20 years of funding since the service was formed. And... Uh, just brief overview, the CRD Arts and Culture Support Service, or CRD Arts and Culture, is a sub-regional service with the mission of supporting, promoting, and celebrating the arts, and our vision is that arts are central to life in the region. The CRD Arts uh, and Culture supports the region's arts through grant programs, uh, which we provide to nonprofit organizations, who in turn develop programming that creates artistic, social, and economic benefits for the region, and in the last number of years, there's been an increased focus on outreach efforts, uh, which help foster collaboration between arts organizations, funders, and audiences. And this work is all made possible uh, through the support of the nine participating jurisdictions, which are highlighted on the map, uh, Squimalt, Highlands, Machosan, Oak Bay, Saanich, Souk, Southern Gulf Islands, Victoria, View Royal, and uh, this year we also received a contribution from Sydney, so many thanks to the the supporters. Um, and th through uh, that, uh, there was investments uh, of over $2.5 million, uh, which were, was given out through grants. And that funding went to, uh, that funding went to 83 nonprofit organizations and artist-led partnerships represented by each one of those photograph squares that you see on the screen. Um, and that uh, contributed to uh, 3,646 uh, arts workers being employed, uh, of which 3,500 or more were paid artists and 161 were full-time staff, uh, which in turn developed over 4,000 events in our region, which uh, I think we all know what that contributes in terms of both the social uh, and social benefits and the economic benefits to our region. And that is also uh, recognized by the more than 1.7 million people that attended those events and we know that it's been a hard time with a lot of people being isolated and not being able to connect uh, but uh, a lot of those people were able to connect through the arts including 93 percent of those attendance attendances were online in the last year so that uh, grant recipients came from every participating jurisdiction uh, in uh, that uh, provides funds to the CRD Arts Service, uh, including the new member local governments. And last year, 14 recipients came from Machosan, Souk, and so Southern Gulf Islands. Uh, this photo is uh, taken at, on Galliano Island at an event called Active Passive, which is an ambient and experimental music series which, uh, with support of the CRD Arts, has grown significantly and made a big uh, community impact over the past three years. Similar similarly, on... Uh, Pender Island, this is uh, Ptarmigan Arts, uh, which is now our first operating grant recipient from the Southern Gulf Islands. Uh, and Ptarmigan provides an array of high quality arts programming to residents and visitors, including concerts and festivals, a programmed art gallery, workshops, uh, and much of that programming is offered at low or no cost. And uh, this year, I think the expanding a uh, number of organizations that are applying uh, also means that we have first-time grant recipients uh, who are helping to contribute to a more vibrant and creative region. This year saw 17 first-time grant recipients, uh, including the Esquimalt Community Arts Hub, who developed their first mural festival, which is, this photo is of, which helped to bring people together outdoors to watch and learn about mural art at a time when uh, many other events and types of gatherings were not able to occur. So a uh, little focus coming out of the pandemic uh, on uh, the effects of arts and culture on mental health and well-being. As community leaders, I'm sure you all know uh, the connection between arts and well-being, uh, but I wanted to show you that this is backed up by facts. <laughs> a 2019 World Health Organization review of over 3,000 studies identified a major role for arts in the promotion of health and prevention, management and treatness, treatment of illnesses. And closer to home, 
a review of 2016 Stats Canada data showed that Canadians who had attended or participated in arts, culture, or heritage activity were more likely to report being in good, uh, very good, or excellent health and mental health. As you can imagine, that connection became even more crucial during the pandemic. With people spending more time uh, at home, uh, many people isolated, that also uh, had a rebound impact in terms of more people spending time in creative activities and creative pursuits. Uh, importantly, more residents have been consciously engaging in these creative activities to support their mental health. In 2021, 24% of residents said the most important reason to engage in creati creative activities was to improve mental health. This is double of those who rated it similarly in 2019. And it isn't just the affluent who value the arts in this way. Those uh, who identify as female, who live below the median income, or who live with a disability, all tended to value creative activities uh, the most, both before and during the pandemic, underlining the importance of affordable and accessible arts programming, which is, of course, central to the CRD arts mandate. Uh, here in the region, uh, we can see arts organizations and participants making this connection between arts and well-being with support of our grants. And here's a few, of exa few examples uh, from the last year. Culture Den produce, produced a series of short films honoring acts of indigenous resurgence and healing. And these productions were entirely conceived, developed, and performed by indigenous creatives and were presented at Belfry Theatre to a small but distant audience. And feedback included the quote you see here, which is, the performances were medicine. Integrate Arts supported community through arts-based workshops, creating space for conversations and art projects around grief. Of the program, they said, by starting the healing process through art-based activities and conversations, we can create healthier communities. And another example is the International Kazumba Festival, a multi-day celebration of African dance which brought people together for a much needed and delayed celebration after a tremendous amount of isolation, allowing organizers to bring entertainment and connection to the community. And these, of course, are just a couple of examples, and there are so many more stories uh, that you will find uh, referenced and, and highlighted within this document um, in the terms of the impacts, not just the social and economic impacts, as we often talk about the arts, but also the, the impacts of, on health and well-being. So I'm proud to know that the work of CRD Arts and Culture plays that meaningful role in the development of healing, health, and well-being across the region. To, uh, there we go. To uh, end, I, I want to thank my colleagues on the Arts Commission, which you see here. This is Councillor Epp, Councillor Gardner, Councillor Green, Councillor Hundleby, Councillor Legeness, Councillor Lemon, uh, Director Plant, and Councillor Rossing for all their work, as well as the uh, very talented and hardworking CRD Arts staff um, who uh, have done so much helping arts organizations throughout the pandemic and always. Uh, as well as the AAC, which is the volunteer body that provides so much uh, expertise and volunteer labor to make sure that we're um, on the right track. <laughs>